Welcome to Mindful Trinity, and I'm your host, Vaishnavi Charan. So uh, tonight we are joined by Rachel Emma Popots. She is a registered nutritionist, a mental health expert, and founder of B Nutrition. So welcome, Rachel. We are so grateful that you are here with us, uh, enlightening us and just educating us on the topic of nutrition and mental health. Oh, thank you so much, Vaishni. It's so lovely to be here. Thank you for having me. Uh, yes, as I said, we are very grateful to have you as well. So before we start with our discussion, I want to mention a disclaimer on behalf of Mindful Trinity. The opinions, views and beliefs expressed are those of our guest speakers and do not necessarily reflect the viewpoints of Mindful Trinity or the policies of the company thereof. The content of the show does not constitute any legal or medical advice and is provided for the general insight and guidance. If you require specific legal, medical, or any professional advice, you should contact a specialist or a qualified practitioner. So let's get into it. Um, Rachel, why is nutrition so important for mental health? Well, I think the sensory effect of food on our mood is for something that's probably quite familiar to us all. So many of us might associate certain foods with making us feel good, maybe because we connect that food with the fond memories, or maybe we just think the smell, the taste and the texture of that food is going to give us a bit of a lift in that moment. Mm -hmm. But at a real biochemical level, the food that we eat is broken down into the building blocks that support healthy brain cells mm -hmm. and also um, the production of um, the brain chemicals and hormones that help to regulate our mood. So without kind of getting too deep into the science, our mental health is dependent on our bodies functioning optimally. So for example, do our brain cells have enough energy to do their job? Is our nervous system firing correctly? Are our hormones sending the right signals? Is our gut letting the right nutrients in but keeping the bad guys out? And is our immune system on point or is there kind of chronic inflammation going on? So what we eat, really can influence our mental health on many levels. So it's really important to get it right. Oh, wow, awesome. So what are the fin fundamentals of nutrition and what are the roles in mental health? What are their yeah, roles okay. in mental health? <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> so at a really basic level, we um, need to make sure we're getting a balanced amount of protein, um, fiber from carbohydrates and healthy fats. Um, so I'll just kind of talk about all three. Um, so protein, for example, is the building blocks for the chemicals in our brain that regulate our mood. So many of us have heard of things like serotonin, our happy hormone. And um, there's another one called GABA, which is the calming neurotransmitter. Dopamine, which is our motivational um, brain chemical. Mm -hmm. All of these things come from amino acids in protein. And protein also supports blood sugar balance, which in turn keeps our stress hormone cortisol in check. Mm -hmm. So protein is a really good one for a start. Um, and then we've got fiber. So fiber um, feeds the good bacteria in our digestive system. So the gut is quite often referred to as our second brain due to the huge amount of neurons that are actually um, resident in the digestive system in the gut. So keeping a healthy balance of bacteria supports what's called positive gut brain signaling. So scientists believe that that's why if you increase fiber in your diet, you can actually reduce the risk of anxiety and depression. And then the finally, the final basic is healthy fats. So that's things like monounsaturated fats from things like nuts, seeds and avocado. They help to protect our brain cells and support healthy brain function. And then similarly, we've got omega-3 and containing foods mm -hmm. um, like oily fish or flaxseed, which help to reduce inflammation in the brain. And that can help to reduce symptoms of depression and anxiety as well. Wow. It's actually so interesting. And which foods should, should we be avoiding? I mean, we, you've been telling us about the healthy fats and 
um, healthy balance of bacteria. But before you actually answer me, uh, you know, what food should we be um, avoiding? When we talk about bacteria and the healthy balance of bacteria, well, I've been, uh, as a child, I've been learning that bacteria is actually not good for you. It's actually one of the mean guys. Um, so what is a healthy bacteria? Yeah, I mean, we've had this like vast ecosystem that lives in our gut alongside us that's called the microbiome. And that's filled with many different species of um, bacteria. Mm -hmm. And many of them are actually health promoting bacteria as opposed to um, things that might give you symptoms of IBS, for example. So they actually um, live alongside us and help um, um, with many different functions in the body. For example, there's even food that we that we can't digest that they can. And when they digest that food, that's when they start to be able to have their effect um, on us. So yeah, we need them. We can't live without them. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually quite nice to you to know. Um, so which foods should we be avoiding? Um, yeah, so there are definitely certain foods that are notorious mood disruptors and are really unhelpful um, when we're trying to find or that calm feeling or feeling happy. So top of that list, and this is probably no surprise, is refined sugar. Yeah. Um, so the research shows that the more sugar that we eat, um, the more likely we are to become depressed. So although that kind of chocolate bar might feel really good in the moment, mm -hmm. it kind of doesn't help us in the long run. And then we've also got things like refined flour. So you think about pasta and white bread. Basically, that's just sugar in disguise. So because when we eat that type of food, it just gets converted into sugar when we eat it. Mm -hmm. And sugar in whatever form can disrupt our blood sugar balance, which is unhelpful for mental mm -hmm. health. Um, there's a few others. Shall I mention those too? Or? <laughs> yeah, I'm just thinking because, I mean, OK, we all love sugar. I like well, with yeah. me, especially, I have a sweet tooth. I And yeah. I, anything sweet, it actually is, is very appealing my tongue yeah. <laughs> yeah. so what can we replace uh if someone like me that actually likes yeah. sweet stuff what can we yeah. replace it because i mean if we say avoiding this type of foods i think most of us are rebellious and we wouldn't want to do, to avoid it even if we try our mind yeah. will tell us no we need it and we want it so what can we replace yeah. it with and I think, I think as well, it's all about um, balance. So I can kind of make you aware of the foods today. And there's a few more that I can make you aware of that, that are mood disruptors. But I'm certainly not going to advocate that you that you kind of live a life of deprivation because I think it's all about um, finding balance and I think educating yourself. So for example, with chocolate, that's like the, that's honestly one of my, the, I get asked this a lot. Mm -hmm. So for example, if you're kind of that person who gets to kind of three o'clock and you hit that wall and you think, I just need to have something mm -hmm. normally in the, you know, you may reach for kind of chocolate, mm -hmm. which may help you temporarily. And then you might then crash later and not feel so great. But yeah. actually, if you kind of swap that chocolate out for dark chocolate and have that with some nuts at the same time, you're actually going to kind of get that all the kind of positive benefits from the cocoa in the dark chocolate. But if you eat it alongside some nuts, mm. that's going to actually slow the sugar release out. So you're not going to get that spike and then that dip that you might get with just eating to sugar on its own. So it's not even about cutting the sugar out. It's fine. It's about, OK, if I'm going to eat something, it's about what can I eat at the same time that kind of almost stabilizes the, um, that blood sugar and then stabilizes our mood as well. Oh, wow. That's so nice to, to learn. Um, yeah, so, so dark chocolate with a handful of nuts, perfect mood boosting snack, and it kind of makes you feel like you're you're, you're eating something naughty as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, that's also very interesting to know. So, what are your top tips for eating um, for the great mental health? Yeah, okay. So, I would say to um, good things to eat for your mental health. I always say to people, um, eat whole foods, and by that I mean food with no label. So. I mean, this is ideal. So this is kind of like ideal world. Um, obviously, we, we don't live in an ideal world, but in an ideal world, the majority of your food should be coming from uh, fl fresh and plant based food and complemented with a small amount of fish or meat if you want a vegetarian or vegan. Um, and then the second thing I would always say is that. Um, to kind of minimize processed foods so that principle goes hand in hand with my food my first tip mm -hmm. um 
A process food contain many of those mood disruptors that we've just been speaking about. So it's about how can you gradually start to reduce those foods rather than just cutting them out totally, as you, as you said. Um, also, I would say eat the rainbow. So compiling a plate of food with brightly colored food is not only really pleasing to your eye, your mind will thank you for it too, because consuming diverse colors helps provide access to lots of weird and wonderful micronutrients such as flavonoids and plant sterols, and they're all really beneficial for mental health. And then finally, it's about kind of um, finding a way to swap out those like energy sugar dense foods. So things like your bread and your flours and your ri uh, rice, if you can kind of switch them to whole grain varieties, um, this will help support a slower um, sugar release into the bloodstream. So again, and you're getting the fiber as well because the fiber is often stripped out in the processing part. So mm. having that fiber, not only is good for the good bacteria, it's also going to slow that energy release, helping your blood sugar stay um, stable. Also, wow. one thing I hear quite a lot as well, people always say, oh, you know, I think there's quite a popular um, movement at the moment that we should all be kind of ditching the carbs or going low carb and mm -hmm. I think it's just about choosing the right carbs because some because they just they can have a big influence on your mood mm -hmm. but you can't really you shouldn't be avoiding them because the, you know, I talked earlier about these nutrients that kind of help support our brain chemicals and if you don't eat carbohydrates they can't cross the brain the blood brain barrier and actually get into our brain cells mm -hmm. so we do need to make sure that we are eating carbohydrates just the right ones okay out of curiosity what are yeah. the good carbs yeah so I, I i mean obviously any kind of vegetables there's a lot of carbohydrates in any kind of vegetables and as i've mentioned before so you could kind of have like wild brown right wild or brown rice mm -hmm. you could switch whole grain pasta if you can tolerate gluten you could have whole grain pasta you could have um, something like like a quinoa. So it's like a pseudo grain, but it's great because it's got complete protein in and it's got carbohydrates in. Uh, it's great food for um, vegans and vegetarians as a source of protein as well. So plenty of options. Sweet potato, root vegetables. There's lots of different um, options, I think, for um, mental health supporting carbohydrates. Okay, so I know a lot of people say to be healthy, it's it's very costly. Take for, mm -hmm. for instance, if you actually go to McDon uh, McDonald's, for example, to get a yeah. burger over there, it's actually quite cheap. I'm not sure in yeah. your country, but I think in most countries, it's actually quite cheap to get that. And that's yeah. considered unhealthy. To get a healthier meal, it it's quite expensive compared to a, a normal burger from McDonald's. So how can yeah. we how can we eat um, healthy on a budget? Yeah, I think the best thing for that is to plan because I think you, you might be right that you could in that moment you go to McDonald's and get something cheap there and then in, in an instant. But I think if you plan what you're going to eat and so that you only shop for the, what you need, there's also no waste because I think a lot of people kind of buy a lot of food and. Um, don't use it as well so planning what you eat is a great way to kind of start to manage your food budget and also um, consider batch cooking as well so you're making your food go further so then you can you can kind of freeze leftovers or have it the next day for lunch mm -hmm. and then most vegetables and pulses are actually really quite inexpensive so if you're kind of buying a bag of lentils for example that's not that expensive it's definitely cheaper than a hamburger <laughs> and that can make multiple meals rather than just kind of having that one meal there and then so and I think you know I think if we think differently so consider what is grown locally to you as well so when the most expensive vegetables tend to be those that have traveled the furthest. So if you can kind of get hold of vegetables locally or even better grow your own, yeah. then, um, then yes, there's, you know, there's, there's no, that's, there's no cheaper way of, of, uh, of eating. Mm. Um, definitely. Okay. Yeah. It actually does make sense. Oh. I've, I've yeah. been encouraging um, all my family and people that I'm actually connected with to actually, you know, go the, root where we actually can grow our own veggies. And a lot of us yeah. don't have, uh, you know, big uh, spaces where we can actually grow. Yeah. But I'm sure there's actually means and ways of us uh, getting together as a, as a community and doing it together, yeah, even if it's hot you know? 
that's it yeah exactly we have that in in our road we seem to kind of share uh, where i live we kind of one person will like leave their excess apples out for the neighbors to kind of take and it's quite that's a amazing. nice thing yeah so that yeah so we, and we always have excess um last year what did we have excess of uh, tomatoes we had loads of them so we were just giving them away wow. so, uh, yeah it's quite nice <laughs> yeah tomatoes are actually quite expensive at the moment so <laughs> yeah we, we had um, yeah quite good success last year growing them so but yeah. I'm not by, by no means perfect I just kind of it was my lockdown hobby <laughs> very nice hobby so how do how do we uh, set okay this question is actually for you personally how do you okay. set yourself uh, up for a good mood day <laughs> okay um so I have like three things I do every day um the first thing I do is drink a large glass of water as soon as I get up in fact you'll see me drinking water all the time I'm always I've always got it so I'm drinking water as soon as you rise um is great we all know that drinking water is good for our health but even the smallest amount of um, dehydration can increase negative feelings like anger and confusion and depression so um the research shows that the more water that you increase you can significantly reduce feelings of anxiety so i'll take my water i'll fill a glass up for example and take it to bed with me at night so that i've got it like next to me so i've got no excuse as soon as i wake up i just neck that water and then it sets me up Wow. And the second thing I do is have a what I call a positive morning uh, ritual. So this is just something that kind of uh, like goes beyond, you know, the kind of getting up and getting dressed and getting washed and all that kind of stuff. It's about kind of setting your positive intentions for the day. So, for example, I do. I'll get up and take my dog around the block for a walk and it's only 10 minutes but it kind of helps me be more mindful. So because it's quite early, there's nothing more, there's nothing like being outside and, and listening to nature wake up. And mm -hmm. I'm sure you'll have um, more tips than me on this. You're probably a greater expert than me on this, Vaishni. So, so <laughs> in learning. terms of a positive so morning learning. ritual. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then yeah. the third thing then is to get, is to set myself up with a mood boosting breakfast. Mm -hmm. So Lots of people say to me they don't have time for breakfast or they skip it. But um, yeah, I always say skipping breakfast is in no way a good idea if you are stressed in any way or if you're struggling with your mood. So um, my personal go to mood boosting breakfast is a smoothie because it's quick. It's easy. And if you do it right, it can fill you up until lunch. It's also a really good way of um sneaking some vegetables into your diet first thing without you even noticing them mm -hmm. um I've actually just made my favorite one live on Instagram so if anybody is interested they can hop on and have a look later for some inspiration <laughs> oh, lovely very interesting so um okay I'm just going to go check with my audience if they have any yeah. questions for you but yeah, that's no problem. okay but and whilst we actually wait for our audience to ask the questions Mm -hmm. we can I can actually just recap our discussion yeah. so um what I've learned so far from you um okay let me just start from the beginning what we eat affects our mind uh, which also impacts the body and our gut is the second brain I've actually been hearing this quite often um recently as I've been studying the uh, anatomy of the body and so forth also, um, healthy balance of bacteria, healthy fats, nuts, avo, etc., uh, plays a very important role in, in our diet. And we should avoid refined sugars, but in, instead of um, avoiding them wholeheartedly, you can, um, you know, just switch it, have a, have a, 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 a basically another go to instead of just. Uh, how could I say it? just blocking it <laughs> yeah. from your yeah, from your exactly. site? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, dark chocolate and nuts are also very good. I mean, it's actually a yeah. good substitute for refined sugars. And yeah. whole foods, plant-based, fresh, and things like that also yeah. is actually uh, much more beneficial for the body. And we should be reducing pro processed foods. And I like this about eating the rainbow. It should be looking exciting on your plate. It looks like summer yeah, all the exactly. time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah, planning your meals, that is actually something that, that I would also like to try and start doing. Water. I think a lot of us try to run away from water, even though it's so good for us. 
I've also been uh, training myself to be drinking lots of water in the day. Um, yeah, so water actually also helps with our mood swings, reducing anxiety and depression. I like the positive morning rituals and the boosting of the mood, especially with the breakfast. So yeah, it's actually very, very informative. Let me just check with our audience if they have anything for you. Okay. Um, and like I said as well, lockdown is actually easing out in South Africa. So a lot of people are beginning to leave their homes. Oh, um, wow, exciting. <laughs> yeah. So um, I'm just hoping that our regulars are here on <laughs> live stream. But even if they're not here at the moment, um, you can always, okay, yeah, they're actually not here. I don't see any questions from Okay. Uh, like regulars. Let me just double check one more time. Okay, there's no one here. So, guys, if you're going to be catching the replay later on at your own, um, you know, whenever you are available, you can actually just hashtag replay, and um, you can, if you have any questions, you can still type it out there. And uh, Rachel is going to be leaving all of her contact details for you to get in touch with her. So, um, yeah. Before we actually do that, okay, let me just ask Rachel now. Rachel, can you share your, your social links on the news, I mean, on the comments feed? It'll be easy yeah. for the audience to actually get in touch with you. Yeah, I'm, um, yeah, I'm just going to do that now. I'm not sure whether that, this is going to come through on. You, you can also Facebook. do it. Yeah, you can do it afterwards as well. Um, yeah, I can do it yeah, afterwards. You yeah. can do it afterwards. I know you also mentioned about some freebies that you also have. Um, yeah. You can also maybe share the link on the comments feed. So everyone yeah. that's on uh, my page, they can actually have easy access to it. Yeah, I've put it in the chat here, but I don't think it's going to come up on the Facebook Live, is it? Because I don't no, it's not. Zoom, no, no, so. that's what I'm saying. Yeah, okay. When you're ready, you can. I'll actually. do it later. Okay, Absolutely, awesome. Yeah. So I've got, I've got, um, if anybody does want any more tips, I've mm -hmm. got like a free download on my website, which is um, mm -hmm. all about how to improve your mood with food. So this it's free go download it and it's kind of some of the stuff we've been talking about today and some added tips as well so lovely absolutely wonderful helpful. yeah thank you so do you have any parting thoughts to share with our audience yeah i think um i mean we've, we've touched on it a little bit already so i think don't aim don't aim for perfect per, uh, don't aim for perfection you know start slowly making just one small change every week can make a difference so maybe you're commit you, yeah you know maybe you commit to kind of drinking a glass of water every day or maybe you commit to adding a handful of brightly colored vegetables to your evening meal just one small thing like that could make a difference um, yeah, and then let me know how you get on. I'd love to hear about whether these tips have helped anybody or not. <laughs> I'm sure it will. But thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure having you here. Um, yeah. I mean, I actually learned so much. And I'm sure whoever did catch you uh, live, they also learned so much. And